necessary. So the draft was last Thursday, Friday, and then, of course, throughout most of the day on Saturday. Seven rounds, a lot of players picked, and then there were a lot of players that got an opportunity to have a chance to play in the NFL after it was over. Undrafted or non-drafted free agents, Byron Vaughns of Baylor is one of those, and he's now a member of the Dallas Cowboys. In a couple of weeks, we'll report to Frisco to discuss his future there. Byron, David Smoke, and Paul Catalina, Craig Smoke, thank you for your time. What was that like as Saturday was winding down, and did you have an idea that it might be late Saturday before you found out where you would end up? Uh, yes, sir. I kind of knew, talking to my agent ahead of time, that that I was going to most likely be a, get an opportunity at a free agent spot, you know, so... Something my agent had told me before, just be ready for the, the later phone call throughout the day. When do you um, have to start work in Dallas? Um, well, you know, once I got the call, I couldn't stop working, but we <laughs> actually have camp in about two weeks. Okay. That three-day rookie, uh, three rookie mini camp. Byron, uh, just what was that like to, to be able to know an answer to, to what to look forward to next. I imagine you're preparing and, and going through this whole process, not sure what the future looks like. And, you know, it doesn't answer everything I know, but at least to, to kind of know your starting point, how much of a relief is that? Oh, it definitely, uh, you know, it helped me sleep better. <laughs> you know, yeah, no, yeah. I didn't go to sleep. I didn't go to sleep that day uh, until 3 o'clock in the morning because I was just up all night thinking about it. But, you know, it, 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 like I said, it helped me get some sleep. It helped me eat breakfast in the morning. So it definitely relieved a lot of stress that my family and I are worried about. So getting that phone call definitely, uh, you know, it, it put a smile on my face, put a, fat, a smile on my family's face, and it was just an opportunity. So you went to uh, high school in Fort Worth. You're a Fort Worth guy. Were you a Cowboys fan, I'm guessing, or, or did you have your eyes uh, elsewhere on another team growing up? Well, I was kind of a, I had a favorite player growing up. So, you know, like the Troy Palomalu, the Julio Jones, Calvin Johnson, the Ray Lewis. Those are the, I kind of was a, a player that got more than a team because I could, I realized younger is, uh, it's a little bit harder depending on the team, <laughs> you know. So I stopped, really try, I stopped trying to find a team and I just found a favorite player. You know who your favorite team is? The one who calls you to say, hey, come to our camp so you might have a chance to make our roster now, right? No, most definitely. That was an easy answer right there. <laughs> did someone from the actual organization call you, or did they call your agent who then called you? How does that work out? Um, I was in touch with the coach on the staff. Um, and he was kind of talking to me from – he has been talking to me for a minute, saying how much uh, he thinks I can come to the organization to make an impact. So I was kind of in, in contact with the coach on the team. Byron Vaughn's former Baylor Bear now is a member, was signed as an undrafted free agent by the Cowboys soon after the draft this past weekend. Byron, how much do you know about the, the defensive system? The Cowboys are going to run the, uh, under Mike Zimmer. They have a new defensive coordinator all the way around, so uh, it's going to be maybe a little bit different. I mean, they've got some pass rushers there. You're going to get to play with Tank Lawrence and, uh, and Micah Parsons and learn from them, but what do you know so far? Uh, you know, I, I heard that it's a three, more of a three-four defense. So I'm playing more than outside linebacker position where I'd be dropping the coverage, uh, but mostly would be pass rushing. You know, so it, it's kind of a scheme that I'm used to playing it um, at Texas and then playing it at Baylor my last year. And you know, I've been playing football for a minute, so you only got a three-four, a four-three, and a five-two. So <laughs> you know, I kind of, I kind of got a. Uh, Probably got a pretty good idea of what was going to be going on once I get there. All right, so you're in Waco, I believe, um, or are you in? Are you in Waco still? No, so I drove back to Dallas. We'll go back to back to Dallas. Do you have a trainer? Do you work out uh, at a facility? What are you doing over the next couple of weeks until you uh, report to Frisco? Actually, going to be getting some pass rush training again out there uh, with my pass rush specialist, Coach Tuck. And I'm going to be working out with APEC uh, on the mm -hmm. west side of Fort Worth. The guys, uh, an organization I was working out with when I was in uh, high school, excuse me. So getting back with those guys and being able to get some pass rush work. So 
you know, I'm, I'm going to be busy. So I kind of consider it two a days now because I'm doing passwords, doing football work. I'm doing uh, explosive workouts with APEC. Byron, uh, APEC was owned by Bobby Stroop, and I think he sold it. He's been working out and has done a lot with Patrick Mahomes uh, it, it, when he was in high school in East Texas and also college at Tech and then with Kansas City. Um, did you know Bobby at that time? Did you ever run into Patrick Mahomes when he was uh, at the facility up in Dallas and Fort Worth? There's a lot of athletes that have used them. Yes, sir. He's, uh, Bob is actually, Mr. Struve is definitely a great uh, owner and a coach when he was, you know, at APEC. And I did get a chance to, you know, Patrick Mahomes is kind of in his own <laughs> lane when it came to training. You know, he's probably paid <laughs> Probably paid a few a few more bucks, you know, get the personal training. So uh, I did get to witness some of the stuff that Pat Mahomes was doing, and you know, it's kind of a reason he can maybe do a backflip if he's getting tackled and still throw the ball. So Bob Stoop does uh, things that your body probably hasn't done before, but he also gets you ready for those weird positions you can be in on the field. You know, so it's kind of crazy his his mindset of training, but. Uh, you know, if you walk in his one of his facilities, you see, you see somebody doing weighted cartwheels. You know, there's a there's a purpose behind it. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I don't know if you'll see him or uh, if you'll bump into him again, but he started out with this small metal building right there in Tyler, where he was training high school athletes, and then the because of the success that he had well before Patrick Mahomes, he now is uh, of course he kept growing including the, a brand-new facility and also the one that's in Dallas and Fort Worth. So I was curious about if you'd bumped into him. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. When you decided to leave Utah State for Baylor, aren't you the one that, like, rides horses? and is, are, are You're a cowboy? <laughs> yes, sir. How, how did all that work out with all of you? I think all of your either livestock or your horses or whoever else that you, that you have as part of your other side of your life. Yeah, so uh, honestly, I wouldn't say I grew up a cowboy. I, I kind of grew up, uh, you know, I was always playing some type of sports in the summertime, in the winter, you know, in the fall. So I grew up an athlete kid, but I always grew up outside. And uh, once I got to Utah State, I got to meet uh, Johnny Carter. He's a quick who was. He did play football for Utah State and he went to the portal. But uh, now he is a – He's a cowboy. Like that's he grew up a cowboy. He grew up breeding horses and uh, raising chickens and different type of hens and all that. So being able to get to Utah State and he was already there for some while. He kind of took me in and let me wrestle a cow or two, you know, and uh, let let me get my boots dirty and kind of see that side of being a cowboy. You know, I kind of I, I can see myself buying land and having cows and horses and all types of animals. You know, just Living the cowboy life, the blue collar, how let me go build a shed in my backyard type of life, you know. <laughs> do, do you uh, do you start watching like westerns, like Tombstone and stuff now, or what do you do to get in the the vibe? I don't know. It's kind of uh, uh, I got to I got to give it all to Johnny Carter. He put me on some music that, that I listen to. I have a few country playlists that I might listen to in the morning time, you know, throughout the whatever I'm feeling, and then uh, you know. Whatever is kind of going on, trail rides, adding four words that I go to. I have a dirt, well, I had a dirt bike. Let me say, you know, I can't, I can't ride dirt bikes now, but <laughs> uh, I had a dirt bike and I would go to trail rides and meet up with some of my friends and, you know, kind of just enjoy that. I guess you could say cowboy experience with people got horses and, you know, your dirt bikes and four wheelers out there and quad. So, uh, Anything I can do outdoors kind of gives me in that that cowboy blue collar mentality. Well, I mean that's it, it, it's a physicality with uh, dealing with livestock, horses, or whatever. Does that allow you to get away from football, or does that still bring you to competing like you're on the field? Oh no, it's kind of peaceful. Uh, it's definitely very peaceful because you know animals animals have their own personalities too, and that's something that. Uh, you, if you sit back and you get to spend time with horses or 
some sometimes even chickens. You'll see some chickens might have a little spice, spicy attitude. Some horses might be a little bit softer. And I kind of look at everything as a. I'm trying to figure out who you are. You're saying, you know, because you know some animals might. You you're a little bit too smart to be a horse. Where did you figure that out? So you know, it's kind of. It's a fun time spending spending time with the animals, you know, on the farm and kind of figuring out their day-to-day basis and what they like to do, you know. All right, so you're reporting a couple of weeks to Frisco. It's right there in your backyard. An opportunity here because uh, 32 teams, uh, they had the draft, and then you get the phone call. What are the expectations? What are the legitimate, realistic expectations of what you think you can do? Definitely go in and um, play on special teams. You know, it's gonna get a get an opportunity to be on that fifty three man roster starting off my rookie year with special teams. And when the opportunity comes to present itself, uh, and the coaches can trust me. Eventually, getting on the field, so whether it's third down packages, whether it will be, it's kind of it's kind of like college all over again. You know, you got to go go in and build the trust and. Show the guys who you are on the team. Uh, you got to earn the respect of the vet. So I'm definitely doing special teams and, you know, uh, showing the guys that practice. So, like I said, whenever I get the opportunity to do what I do, it's just going crazy. So rookie, a lot of special teams, you know, if we get some fourth quarter blowouts, halftime blowouts, you get the opportunity to get into the game then. Yeah, you, you the rookies make the team usually with special teams. Maybe a couple of the skill position players, maybe not just because of who they are, quarterback, et cetera. But good luck, Byron. It was great talking to you when you made the decision to leave Utah State for Baylor. Happy for you, proud of you. Go take advantage of the opportunity, and we'll stay in touch, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you Thank for the you. call and the opportunity now. Have a good day. You too. Byron Vaughn's Cowboys linebacker, undrafted free agent, an actual uh, cowboy. And an actual cowboy, absolutely.